Hi, this is Ed Rudiger, and once again, I am absolutely delighted you're tuning in to hear another one of my sermons. Now, I'm preaching this in my church, at Sligo Presbyterian Church in a little bitty town named Sligo, Pennsylvania. It's about 10 miles south of Clarion, right off of Interstate 80. I'm preaching this on October 2nd, which, by the way, is also World Communion Sunday. Uh, and it's part of a series that we started way back in, in August. So, listen for the Word of God. Well, here we are, entering October. Therefore, I think it's appropriate for me to mention that as of this morning, we now have, should be a drum roll, 84 days before Christmas. Time sure flies when you're having fun, right? We're also at week number eight in our sermon series entitled Cultivating the Fruit of the Spirit, a look at Galatians 5, 22 through 23. One that's focused on these two verses from Paul's letter to the Galatians. By contrast, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against such things. Of course, since this is sermon number eight, that means we've already looked at the first seven spiritual fruits, starting with love, something we said is essential and active and godly, and then joy, something that's given and empowering and contagious. We talked about peace and how it can change our perspective of God and others and ourselves. And then we talked about patience, a quality that we all know is important and that we can develop when we decide to pause and to trust to pray, and to act. And then we discuss kindness, how it's a quality of God, but not in our nature either to do or to accept. And yet, it's still something God wants us to show. And that's possible when we make the decision to stop being jerks and to start being as helpful and useful as possible. And then we looked at goodness, a characteristic that God shows, wants us to show, and that may demand that we overcome some obstacles to get there, and that is actually demonstrated when we help one another. Which brings us to last week in our discussion of faithfulness, and how it involves us deciding, focusing, resisting, and living. Now, that's what we've been talking about. And so this morning, we're going to look at spiritual fruit number eight, and I'm talking about gentleness a word that's also translated meekness when it's used in other passages. And I'll tell you, right out front, I was having a tough time getting a handle on this topic during the, the last week. Something that always makes me a little bit nervous going into a Sunday. I mean, I knew what it was, but I wasn't sure how to explain it. And let's get real, we don't live in a particularly gentle world one in which meekness is considered a positive. And so last week was a little bit of a struggle. But I've got to tell you, that changed yesterday morning right before I got up. You see, as I was lying there in bed rubbing Coco's tummy, and Coco's my, my dog, not my wife, it suddenly hit me. That's really what gentleness is all about. I mean, although we might not be all that gentle to one another, because, you know, let's face it, being tough is seen as way more important than being soft. I think most of us show gentleness to babies and to pets. Good night, nurse. I've seen guys I'd never want mad at me just melt when they're faced with a baby. And, and guys one might describe as, as a, real animals, incredibly tempted incredibly tender when holding a baby. Now that's really what it means to be meek. Man, that's what it means to be gentle. And so with that in mind, we're going to talk about gentleness this morning. And to do that, we're going to use the Bible to answer two very simple and straightforward questions. First, what is gentleness? And second, how can gentleness be developed and strengthened? Now that's what we're going to be doing for the next 10 minutes or so. And of course, that starts with question number one, what is gentleness? In other words, what does it mean to be gentle? And why is this something that's important for us to show? What is this gentleness, this meekness business all about? Now, that's the question. 
And I'll tell you, based on what I see going on in the Bible, I think there are three really solid answers. For example, first, gentleness is a characteristic of Christ. It's part of his nature. It's, it's present in his relationship with others. And I'll tell you, I think we can see this both in how he described himself and how he was described by others. I mean, just listen to what he said to the crowds. If you are tired from carrying heavy burdens, come to me and I will give you rest. Take the yoke I give you. Put it on your shoulders and learn from me. I am gentle and humble and you will find rest. This yoke is easy to bear and this burden is light. Now that's how Jesus described himself. And as he was defending himself to the, uh, to the Corinthians, this is how the Apostle Paul described Christ. Do you think I am a coward when I am with you and brave when I am far away? Well, I ask you to listen, because Christ himself was humble and gentle. You see, Jesus was gentle in how he related to others. Therefore, he offers us maybe the definitive example of what gentleness is all about, and that's one. And second, gentleness is also a quality that Christians are encouraged to show. And I think that just makes sense. I mean, since we're following a gentle Jesus, maybe we should be gentle too. Duh. But if we have, but if we have any doubt, just listen to what the Apostle Paul wrote, this time to the Ephesians. As a prisoner of the Lord, I beg you to live in a way that is worthy of the people God has chosen to be his own. Always be humble and gentle. Patiently put up with each other and love each other. And to the Colossians he wrote, God loves you and has chosen you as his own special people. So be gentle, kind, humble, meek, and patient. Put up with each other and forgive anyone who does you wrong, just as Christ has forgiven you. Love is more important than anything else. It is what ties everything completely together. Now that's what Paul wrote. And because of that, we know that this is exactly how we've been called to live. And not just with babies and bats. In fact, I think you could say that it's part of what it means to be a Christian, a willingness to show gentleness. And that's two. And third, when you're talking about what gentleness is, I believe it's pretty clear that according to the Bible, being gentle in our relationships, man, that just makes sense. In other words, in a very real way, it actually benefits both the one who receives it and the one who shows it. For example, as he was dealing with some really bad attitudes being shown by a group of Christians in Corinth, Paul wrote, Some of you think that I am not coming for a visit, and so you are bragging. But if the Lord lets me come, I will soon be there. Then I will find out if the ones who are doing all this bragging really have any power. God's kingdom isn't about a lot of words. It's, it is power. What do you want me to do when I arrive? Do you want me to be hard on you or to be kind and gentle? I think you could call this a rhetorical question because the answer is pretty obvious. And to the Galatians, Paul made this suggestion. My friends, you are spiritual. So if anyone is trapped in sin, you should gently lead that person back to the right path. But watch out and don't be tempted yourself. You obey the law of Christ when you offer each other a helping hand. And remember in the Beatitudes, Jesus said, Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. In other words, being gentle just makes sense. And along with it being a characteristic of Christ and a quality we've been called to show, that's really what gentleness is all about, the answer to our first question. But of course, that answer is pretty much irrelevant if we don't answer question number two, how can gentleness be developed and strengthened? I mean, the what only has meaning if we're clear about the how. And even though I think there may be a lot of different ways we can become more gentle, in my opinion, there seems to be pre three pretty clear characteristics that all truly gentle people seem to share. For example, I think truly gentle people tend to be humble. You see, they don't have to be in the spotlight all the time. And they don't need to be the hero of every story. And they sure don't need to be better than everybody else in the room. Instead, they seem content to work behind the scenes. 
to help those whom God has called for a special job, and to offer the kind of support and encouragement that enables others to become the best they can be. Just being selfless is part of who they are. In other words, they value humility. And I'll tell you, I think that explains why in so many of the verses we've already read, the word gentle is associated with the word humble. But you know, if that weren't enough, in the Psalms, the Greek word that Paul called a spiritual fruit is actually translated humble. For example, the psalmist wrote, you lead humble people to do what is right and to stay on your path. And a little later he said, the Lord is pleased with his people and he gives victory to those who are humble. You see, gentleness and humility are linked. Therefore, if we want to be more gentle, we might want to become more humble. And that's one. But, that's, but it's not just about humility. Because second, I think gentle people are also empathetic. In other words, instead of believing they already know, they're both able and willing to surrender some of their assumptions and to put themselves in the place of other people. To see as best they can the world through their eyes and to feel what they're feeling. That's empathy. And to pull it off, man, that requires that we listen when we prefer to talk and to forgive when we feel justified in holding a grudge. And I'll tell you, I think empathy was what Paul was getting at when he wrote this to the Romans. When others are happy, be happy with them. And when they are sad, be sad. Be friendly with everyone. Don't be proud and feel that you know more than others. Make friends with ordinary people. And you know, maybe that's why Jesus spent so much time with sinners, so that he could truly feel their loneliness and pain. You see, gentle people can feel empathy. And if we want to be gentle ourselves, maybe we might want to do the same. And that's two. And third, gentle people sure seem to be patient. They're not in such a hurry that they overlook the feelings of others or that they fly off the handle when things aren't going their way. In other words, they're not easily aggravated or ready to lash out. Instead, they're willing to take the time to be kind and tender and show compassion and consideration. And you know, maybe that explains why Paul wrote this in his first letter. Or Peter wrote this in his first letter. Be beautiful in your heart by being gentle and quiet. This kind of beauty will last, and God considers it very special. And maybe this is also why Paul gave this advice to uh, To Titus, remind your people to obey the rulers and authorities and not be rebellious. They must always be ready to do something helpful and not say cruel things or argue. They should be gentle and kind to everyone. You see, gentle people are also patient people. And if we're serious about claiming this quality, maybe that's what we need to become too. And for me, that's the third way we can develop and strengthen gentleness in our lives. Of course, I didn't realize all this yesterday morning as I was rubbing Coco's tummy. And yet, whether I knew it or not, I was doing something that was pretty important. You see, I was demonstrating a characteristic of Christ, something Christians are encouraged to show, and and one that benefits both the one who shows it and the one who receives it. And as I did it, I think I was being humble and empathetic and patient. Of course, I recognize that being gentle will probably always be easier to do when you're dealing with a dog or a baby. But I'll tell you, when we recognize what it truly is and take seriously how it might be developed and strengthened in our relationship with others, at that point, I believe we'll be cultivating Paul's eighth fruit of the Spirit, Namely, gentleness. Amen. Well, thank you again for tuning in and hearing this sermon. I hope you found it meaningful. Of course, if you're in the neighborhood, and we're talking about Sligo, Pennsylvania, about 10 miles south of Clarion, come on by Sligo Presbyterian Church any Sunday at 10 o'clock. You can worship with us. I think you'll, you'll have a good, meaningful time. 
Of course, if you're around here on Wednesday morning, 1030, we have a Bible study. Just started a new one on Romans. So you're welcome to uh, come to that. The discussions are also posted on our YouTube and our Facebook page. So you might want to go there. And so until I talk with you again, I want you to remember that you, my friend, you are a child of God. And God loves you very much. Goodbye for now.